Let's go to the hilt. All the way to the hilt. <laughs> Again. <laughs> All the way to the hilt. Yeah. All right. Oh, yes. What a mess. What a mess. Hickok 45. Making a mess. Never know, do you, what I'm going to be doing. Let's get that mess off of this fine implement, this battle implement. Yes, this is a, uh, an 1860 Cavalry Light Saber. Okay, we're going to take good care of it after that foolishness. We're going to oil it down a little bit. Get the blade in good shape. Yes, this is not just a replica of one of those fine sabers from the Civil War era. This is from the Civil War era, made in 64 or even 63, as I'm told, uh, labeled 64, but uh, sweet, here we go. Uh, yes, that is a, uh, it's, it was called the light uh, saber, the uh, cavalry lightsaber, primarily because the, uh, the one that preceded it was uh, the 1840 model that was heavier and uh, thicker it was just a bigger s s saber and uh, it was a little bit straighter I believe I'm not an expert in these things and uh, it was more of a sword but it was uh, it was just heavier and uh, it was also called I think the, what, the wrist breaker or the, uh, had some kind of nickname like that because it was so big and it was straighter and if used I think even properly you know as a cavalry uh, saber or sword, it uh, could end up putting a lot of pressure on your wrist, breaking the blade, breaking your wrist or whatever. So we'll talk a little bit about that. So some of you know more about these than I do. I uh, I just uh, am kind of a history history buff in a way. I'm, I'm not in a, a real detailed sense necessarily, but I always wanted a, uh, a saber or sword from that era and recently picked this one up. Now, one of one that was actually made before the war was over, the Civil War, and very likely used in the war. And you can see the, the way that thing is made. You know, the brass is, uh, has a patina just from age. And I don't know that someone coated it to try to protect it or not back in the day or whenever, but I think it's just a kind of a reddish uh, brown patina. But that's brass. The handle's made of wood with uh, leather wrapped around it and then twisted copper wire wrapped around that. Now it looks like brass wire if there's such a thing, but it's supposed to be copper wire. And all that's original. This one's still in pretty good shape. Uh, notice the patina on the blade. It, it has a good look about it. And the markings are, are fairly clear. You see the U.S. These were made for the Union. These were actually issued to the Union. Now, of course, some of the Confederates ended up with them too but it was uh, issued to the Union, general issue, uh, I believe beginning in uh, 1862. Even though it's considered the 1860 lightsaber, I don't think any of them were issued, according to my reading, until 62. Now this one was made by, you can, you can kind of see there, the Mansfield uh, and Lamb uh, there in Rhode Island. And that's one of the companies that, uh, that made these. Kind of like World War II or any other time, a lot of companies that were really not even making weapons uh, ended up making weapons, like the 1911 or the M1 carbine. Anybody who had a machine uh, shop or a manufacturing company might have been solicited to, to make these kinds of things. So there were, there were several companies. Ames made most of them, I think. Roby, who else? Tiffany and Company made some. But they're all basically the same with some variances. Okay? About a 35-inch blade, I believe, one inch wide. Again, this was lighter than the 1840 model. A lot of the guys in the uh, in the South, as I, from my reading, were still carrying the 1840, as far as cavalry, uh, carrying the 1840 model, which was, again, heavier, thicker, and uh, a little more cumbersome. This one was considered more desirable. and uh, But again, it was issued to the Union troops, or the U.S. on it. But uh, it's, it's just cool, the fact that that thing was made in 1864 and was very likely carried in battle you know in 1864 the war didn't end until you know 65 so uh that's just fascinating to me that's the real deal 
the real deal. Uh, and still in pretty good shape. The scabbard as well, you know, all the rings and everything. And you can see where uh, uh, it, it was dragged. You know, these, these hung pretty low down on your own. I can't really demonstrate. I don't have the, the, the gizmo. You've seen them in the movies, uh, the cavalry carrying. They hang down about like that. And so, or I'm 6'8", might not, might not drag, but for most people, that would drag a lot. And so you can tell, you know, that was perfectly rounded pretty much when it was made. But so that's dragged on the ground. So it was actually carried uh, in that fashion. And this is the correct scabbard for it. It fits in there just the way it's supposed to. Uh, because there are some variances in those, I understand. It tightens up and nice snug fit. So, very, uh, very common. There are about 300,000 of these made. And, again, that's one reason I like it. I'm not as interested in, there, in some of the, uh, the unusual pieces that go back and hit, whether it's a firearm. I know there are a lot of firearms you, you see I don't have, like old firearms. People ask me about Schofields and Smith & Wessons from the uh, 19th century. And uh, let's see, there's there's all kinds of guns that were made. I mean, open up a book, guns, pistols, handguns of the 19th century or something. You'll see all these guns you don't even know. You know, I've read some of that and I've looked through those books and things. But I'm more interested in the, in the more common. You can't be interested in all of them. You can't have them all, you know. Uh, unless you have a museum or something. So the ones that most people carry tend to be of interest to me. Uh, that's just the way it is. And this was a very common, yeah, very common. And that's why I'm interested in it, you know. Uh, I mean, they're expensive even at that. I mean, the thing was made in 1864. But uh, the fact that when you hold this, you know that that's what so many of the cavalry uh, carried. It's kind of cool. They're in the Civil War on the Union side, some on the, on the South. So uh, I'm not... A saber collector. I, I might eventually get an 1840 model just because that's that was the other one that was really popular during the time. And now some officers carried these too. And uh, and I, 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 I read that Custer, Jeb Stewart, some of the famous people that actually carried this saber. Uh, but there were different sabers for officers. And again, I've not uh, studied them in depth, but I know their sabers were not as much for fighting, some of them, as for just signaling to the troops. You know, and I've seen, I've held a couple of them. They're really flimsy, the ones I held, but they're, they're different models of those too. And I'm, I'm not an expert, don't pretend to be one. Uh, but this is a pretty cool and a very common uh, uh, example of something that was used back in, back in the, uh, the Civil War. And uh, again, the Civil War ran from 61 to 65. You know, uh, for those of you who are a little bit uh, historically challenged and uh, a lot of, I know young folks are and old folks for that matter. So that, uh, that goes on back. I mentioned in the radio show, uh, I referred to this, and then about my passing interest in, in that. We have so many battlefields around Tennessee. It's just fascinating. And Civil War shops, I got this down at the uh, Stones River. Uh, and there's a, I mean, call it a relic shop. Larry Hicklin, I think, runs it. A good, good fellow. Always has some really interesting artifacts down at the Stones River battlefield. Good fellow. And... Uh, you, you got to trust those folks because they are they can be a really good advisor on these relics because there are frauds or fakes you know in, in the field of course because anytime you're dealing with uh, something that's kind of valuable there's a way to fake it you know somebody will come up with that that you know so anyway uh, light cavalry uh, or lightsaber uh, U.S. cavalry by the way uh, that's a word that people miss spell and, and, and mispronounce. I have to watch myself on it. You know, you're familiar with maybe seeing around the corner the Calvary Baptist Church, which is what? C-A-L-V-A-R-Y, the Calvary. I don't think it's E-R-Y, it's A-R-Y, Baptist Church. Well, the Calvary, the guys on the horses with the sabers and the pistols tucked in their belt, that's Calvary, C-A-V-A-L-R-Y, Calvary. So, uh, yeah, watch yourself. I know I have to on that. Okay. Uh, now, one of, one of the things I was going to point out, too, that I, uh, from my reading and from Larry Hicklin was pointing out to me how uh, the difference between a saber and a sword, you ever wonder what the difference is? Send me some money, I'll tell you. Now, the difference is uh, that the saber is more curved and a sword is more straight. It's either straight or almost straight. And uh, he was explaining to me how the cavalry, they were on horseback, of course, and and cavalry, and they were supposed to, they would kind of hold it like that. You got a little perfect spot for your thumb there, and you know, in a cavalry charge, man, you got that thing locked in. 
and I know this is not pleasant to think about, but uh, let me stick part of this uh, watermelon back up on here, and we're going to hack that other one too. But uh, in a cavalry charge, more or less, uh, the curved ones. I know, again, it's not pleasant to think about, uh, or gross, but uh, that's what happened to thousands of people, you know, in battle and in the Civil War. So let's say someone was unfortunate enough to be poked with this thing. Okay. Uh, as you're riding by, of course, you're on a 2,000-pound horse or whatever it was. And so you, this is going to be coming upward. And what would happen with a straight weapon, you know, sword, is it's more likely to break or pull out of your hand or break your arm but when it was curved maybe actually the hay is a better example just sticking that hay but it would do, it's going to pull you want to pull you off the horse and so they they uh they put the curve in it and designed it that way so it, it's more likely to, to pull out and you're able to hang on to it okay that's a poor explanation but that's that's kind of what that's all about just the right amount of curve too much curve and it wouldn't be effective but with a little bit of curve, it worked better. Again, it's a gross thing to think about. As they say, war is hell. And if you see any of the movies uh, that depict it fairly accurately, like Saving Private Ryan, or even some of the old movies you know, that deal with the Civil War, or you read about it, it's, it's very, very uh, graphic and uh, nothing that we like to think about too much. It's that simple. Uh, so, I'm gonna get more watermelon on there. So I am uh, taking good care of this thing. These is our, uh, these relics are a piece of history. I don't know what to do with my rag. There it is. But uh, and by the way, you don't want to do anything to these like uh, like sand on them. Now you might look at this if you're not familiar with relics or coin collecting or anything like that, and not know. You go, well, I could take some steel wool, or I could uh, take a grinder and get the rust out of that, or the patina, you know, or or shine up the brass. You know, on that hand guard and stuff. Yeah, you could, but you'd be taking the value down about 50% or more. So, just like with a coin or anything, you just kind of leave it as it is. Keep it clean so that it doesn't deteriorate further. And uh, just take care of it. All right? That's what you want to do mainly. Okay, anything else I didn't tell you about that? Uh, like I said, there were about 300,000 of these made. And they were made uh, mostly during the Civil War, between 60 and I think 65. And it was used, this saber was used, and standard issue for the U.S. troops through the Civil War, on up through the Indian Wars, and even carried in the Spanish-American War, according to what I read. So they made so many during the Civil War, uh, they didn't really make a lot of them after that, I don't think. So uh, that was the other thing I wanted to point out. So very common. I also read that this is a sword you see quite often in the Western movies because maybe anybody carrying that's carrying a saber uh, because there were so many of them and back in the 1920s and 30s and 40s they were they were you know not that expensive just like the old cold single actions you pick those things up back then for for not very much whereas now they're extremely collectible just like these are so okay so let's finish up with uh, but anyway before I before I finish up with this other watermelon again these old artifacts and relics are really, really special, and uh, I, this is really neat. I realize this is not a, a knife I, I grew up with, or I don't have a lot of history with it. I haven't had it that long, uh, but it's been around a long time. And when I think about the history of it, uh, that that's really cool. It's just uh, interesting to me. So, what should we do with this guy? We have another melon to take care of. So again, if I'm on horseback. This is tough business, isn't it? What a way to have to fight. So I might just uh, come across the enemy and have to... <laughs> or, <laughs> there you go, Gunner. <laughs> or I might have to uh, just uh, serve watermelon that way at the next family reunion. That's an idea, isn't it? We'll just bring out the saber and slice it up for everybody. <laughs> well, are you <laughs> happy, Gunner? <laughs> Then we're not shooting, Gunner can make an appearance. Okay. So I'm gonna wipe that off again. So anyway, I hope you uh, you know kind of uh, enjoy that a little bit or you appreciate the, the history of a piece of iron like this. And uh, uh, you know, and, and just, I don't know, uh, can understand why people are fascinated 
by this sort of thing is still around, you know, that people have taken care of. And just a very interesting uh, relic from days gone by. Uh, not nice to think about what this thing might have done to, who knows, maybe my ancestors, you know, your ancestors. But again, that's just, that's just life. That's just life. So, 1860 uh, cavalry, lightsaber. Quite an interesting piece to me, and uh, hope you find that halfway enjoyable. Life is good.